When I was younger, I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to have my own spaceship and discover planets until I got older and realized that's not really what astronauts do. And it requires a lot of hard work and determination and I didn't have that at the time. And even if I did manage to become one, would I still love it? Could I afford all the training? What if the spaceship explodes? What if I get trapped on the moon? Those are my current thoughts and they may seem stupid, but back then the sky seemed boundless. Now that same sky above me appears low, narrow, and heavy. Life is hard, and it sucks sometimes, but it also sucks to be locked in that mindset. Yeah, we may not have the best upbringing, family, friends, or surroundings, but people change, and as time passes, so do our environments. I believe it is acceptable for there not to be a good way of living. We don't get all the answers, and we're possibly afraid of finding them. I feel that searching for more answers despite the agony they may cause is a lot more honest way of living than to be pleased with just one solution and then blocking out the others. Now, you may not know what to do with your life, and you're possibly afraid of everything and afraid of failing. You have no goals or purpose and, well, I can't really say anything because I don't know your situation. I just know that you have to be willing to try. And that's why I'm recommending a couple of mangas that helped me, and hopefully they should help you. Ten thousand years ago, I was looking up at these stars. Ten thousand years later, I must still be looking at the same stars. This is Pi. She likes to watch the stars and she's immortal. And she also likes to rap like Kendrick. Pi is immortal and so is her brother Maki and her mother. Pi just tries to find things to keep her entertained while Maki wants to know more about mortality. But the closest thing he has is books. And that's pretty much it. You know, William Shakespeare and also sometimes pets. Even though their mother tells him not to have pets because it only brings sadness to them, he doesn't care. He shows Pi where he buries his pets and we see a grave full of crosses. Pi, do you want to have a pet? He gives her a puppy and she names it Peachy. They go everywhere together, they play together, they run together, and they bond and time goes by and Peachy gets too old and sadly passes away. And what Pi does next is pretty... Powerful. Even though the art is simplistic, the message behind them are pretty intense. And I can't show it, so I'm just going to blur it. But you'll probably get what I'm hinting at. How many thousands of times have you read this? It turned into a fossil when I wasn't paying attention. Where did everyone go? Why can't we just go to that place? Mother doesn't tell us the answer. I read a lot of books and I can't find the answer either. Hi, I've been trying to find all this time people that are still living. There used to be so many people. They thought about all kinds of ideas, wrote so many books, made and destroyed so many things, even though they all die without exception. Maybe they did those things because they will die. I want to meet a human that has yet to die and ask them directly about the inevitability of death and about the inability to die. So Maki and Pai go searching for a mortal human. They go through a pretty crazy journey and they end up going back to their mother. One night while they're sleeping, Maki notices something flashing in the sky. They start running towards it and see it fall into a lake. And what emerges is a... So I wanted to look at a painting with all of you and I am not an art teacher of any kind or art critic or whatever you want to call it. But what do you think of when you see this painting? Now most of you would ask, why is there a horse next to a lion? Don't they live like far away? I actually don't know, you could probably look it up. But if you said that the horse is afraid of the lion, you're kind of right. But that isn't really what the horse fears. What it fears is his impending death. Oh, but the title is Horse Frightened by a Lion, shut up. The moment you fear death, the value of life maximizes. And that's what this painting captures. If you could never die and live forever, you would never have these thoughts. You wouldn't appreciate these things. Life, love, happiness, rainbows. You wanna know why rainbows are so majestic and beautiful? It's because they won't last forever. And they're just there for the moment. Life is beautiful because it's temporary. If we lived forever, things wouldn't be appreciated the way they should be. We are free to make our own choices, but we are condemned to always bear the responsibility of the consequences of these choices. Again, we are free and we have freedom, but without any purpose, goals, or dreams, it feels a whole lot like boredom. This manga is about us. Yes, us. All of you are around this age and you don't know what to do. It doesn't matter whether you're in your early or late 20s, everyone has had this dreadful unknown point in their lives when they are consumed with self-doubt and anxiety about their life's path and future. 
And it's nothing to be ashamed of, everybody goes through this. The fact that our parents have already made us attend universities and take classes in which we have no interest simply adds to these feelings. Some of you may have parents who don't believe in you, which sucks, or they're afraid of letting go. Even so, we all know that there is no turning back. Our actions have a long-lasting impact on our lives, but what happens if you choose to quit? Well, that's exactly what Maiko does. She graduates college and gets an office job and has been there for two years. So she just puts in her two weeks and decides that she'll finally be free, but she ends up just being bored. Life without purpose or any direction honestly feels depressing. It's like the feeling after you watched a good show or played a really great single player game, or when you read a really great manga. You have this sort of feeling that you can't really explain. It's like some sort of limbo. It's hard to describe the feeling that I get from this manga. I could just read the description to you, but I feel like that won't do it justice. Have you ever thought about what would your life be like if you genuinely didn't have to worry about other people and money? It would be great. We wouldn't have all this pressure or anything holding us back. We could do what we want. How many of you guys have a secret hobby or talent or something that you like to do and that nobody knows? I'll tell you mine. It's YouTube. And if I told my parents, you want to know what they'll say? What the hell is that? You see, my parents are Facebook fanatics. So anything that isn't on Facebook, they don't really know about. Well, YouTube, I mean, kind of. Wow, okay, I am off topic. Let's get a bit more serious. I recently had these thoughts about what will I do after graduation, and will I be happy? Is it a forced decision? I don't know. These thoughts were just messing with me throughout the day, but I'm no longer scared of the future. Maybe because I realized that even if I don't make it or succeed, I'll still be alive and well. Yeah, it's a bit sad, but it's only temporary, and I feel like that eases my mind a bit. I should point out that Selenin does not actually provide any answers, but it does provide some reassurance. Hashi, who's 19 years old, has a piece of car in his brain that caused him to suffer from a disorder that makes him unable to stop himself from saying all the things he thinks and feels. Hana is 21 and she um, has unexpected orgasms anywhere and everywhere. Mari, who is 6, is unable to perceive the people around her. And finally, we have Hideo. He's 10 and he claims to have superpowers and can communicate with aliens and God. Now, since the introductions are done, you might think, what does this have to do with the video? This manga seems ridiculous and you're partially right, but just listen. Even though Hashi does suffer from a disorder, he believes that he's sick and ill, which is true, but he blames everything on his illness. He doesn't try to withstand it. Like those people who have ADHD and then, you know, it turns them into alcoholics or something. Give me better drugs. I puked everything and they don't work anymore. Psychotherapy won't solve anything. I'm ill. There's no remedy for idiots. Indeed, you suffer from a disorder that forces you to say everything that you think without hiding anything. But in the end, you're just playing with people. Those aware of their recklessness act politely instead. We all have a burden in our hearts, even if we don't want it. It's unavoidable. You have to accept yourself for who you truly are and stop pretending. Maybe this is the only way. If it is like this then... Then cure me if you really are a doctor. Bad doctor. Hashi treats everyone like crap all because they were born that way. And he was made that way. He basically puts himself on a pedestal compared to everybody else who's ill and sick. I never thought that this manga would have such a strong message with such a bizarre story. Like what I got from this manga is way too serious. We have to learn to accept ourselves. I know there's this trend where people want to be like their favorite characters, Batman, Spider-Man, Goku. Shoot, even I'm guilty of it, but we need to learn that we don't have to be our heroes, but ourselves. To do the things we wish to do, the things we think we might be good at with all of our dedication and accept ourselves for what we are with honesty. If you genuinely like Isekai and love all the repetitiveness that comes with it, get help. I think that's how we need to live our life. I personally never have had these thoughts until I finished this manga. Now don't get me wrong, it's great to try to be these characters and heroes, but we shouldn't forget who we are. We're perfect and fine just the way we are, and if those heroes help motivate us and improve ourselves, then by all means, believe in them, but remember to believe in yourself. That's not what I meant. Now, some of you may not want to listen to me rant about some stuff in my life, specifically PC problems. 
I know it's a manga recommendation video, so if you don't want to listen to this, there's one more recommendation. So feel free to go see what it is, and no, this is not an excuse to practice animation. This may come as a shock to most of you, but all the videos I create are on my laptop. Yes, a laptop. A regular Lenovo laptop. It literally had one USB port, so every time I had to record, I had to unplug my mouse and use the mouse pad. And sometimes it wouldn't work. So then I had to read the script from my phone while recording, which isn't really that bad, but still really inconvenient. And that's not the worst part. The screen is so small. Some of you may understand, but a laptop screen is just so small. But it wasn't all that bad. It was my first ever laptop and it holds a special place in my heart. I remember my parents went to the store with me to get it, but I remember I paid for it and they said that they'll pay me back, but I don't think they ever did. R regardless, every single video and thumbnail was done on this laptop, and sadly, it started giving out on me. Please, I'm tired. Please save me, I'm burning. Please, 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 I'm tired. Please, God, please, I'm tired, please. It's overheating again? Oh man, I'll just put it to sleep. No, don't. Since it kept overheating, I started thinking and I realized that it's time that I get a PC. All I knew is that they had a big light that just runs in a circle inside a big box. And then that's when I found out about pre-builds. Now before everyone starts hating on me, it was convenient. A PC that's already built and I didn't have to touch or possibly make or break. Wow, that sounds amazing. I turned on the computer and I realized it had the same storage as my laptop. And then for some reason, I decided, you know what, I'll download Valorant, because I think everyone who has a PC has downloaded that game at least once. It took a minute, but it finally downloaded, and I was playing the tutorial. Man, I want to play Jet. Okay, we're back in. It looks good. If anyone would like to give me some advice on some parts or PCs in general, that would be great. Have you ever experienced a bodily memory or a memory of something that you hold dear in your life? Such as the taste or smell of your mother's cooking, or a hat that your parents or grandparents gave you. Whatever it might be, everyone has a sentimental object, and even if it's not, it's psychological. You still have some sort of memory. We all have this type of ray of hope. And for these kids, their ray of hope is a Nissan Sunny 1200, also known as the Sunny. This is housed in an orphanage named Star Kids Home. Although the vehicle is broken and cannot be used, the kids find comfort in it because they have no idea when they will be able to return home or see their families. With the help of his imagination, Haruyo, Haruyo, Haruyo utilizes the Sunny to escape into an imaginary world in which he is an outlaw on the run. In doing so, he resembles his tendencies to rebel against his feeling of loneliness. The manga's main characters are the orphanage's children? Or the kids? Why did I word it like that? For instance, say, a bookworm who dreams of driving home and meeting his parents. He conceals his emotions and holds on to the hope that his parents will return, even though he knows they won't. They want to leave the orphanage and return home, but they can't. They can't face the thought of losing their closest friends. The children act like children. You might be thinking, well, if their parents weren't bad parents, they could step up and take care of them. The parents do, of course they have their own reasoning and regrets for abandoning their kids and Matsumoto masterfully depicts their intimate heartbreaking encounters between the kids and their parents. Listen, I despise horrible parents just as much as the next person, but a lot of these parents have good intentions. Some of them, but they are limited by their circumstances, such as poverty, divorce, or addiction. Even though life's conditions aren't perfect, everyone must go on and it's difficult to place the blame. You don't know what got them into that situation. Although Matsumoto has indicated that Sunny is a fiction instead of a memoir, he was raised in a foster home. And that's where he got the ability to make every character seem like real people. As a result, this manga remains realistic. Matsumoto was so impacted by his own orphanage experiences that he was concerned with the characters in his story that they would be too similar to individuals he knew. So beautiful but tragic. In an interview, Matsumoto stated, I'll draw a scene of a child crying, and I'm not sure if it's the child crying or me. 
You don't even have to be an orphan to enjoy this manga. All you need is a heart and some sympathy or emotions or a brain. Don't try to analyze the story like me, just enjoy it. Wait, this is a recommendation. Oh, I might have messed up and gave too much information. I don't really know if this is a manga analysis or... Well, I mean, since it's my video, I can do whatever I want, so I'm going to end it too. So that's what I'll do. But before I do, here's a quote from Inoue Asano. Dream big, everyone, because dreams are free. But don't forget to be realistic about your abilities and financial needs. Otherwise, you're in for some serious disappointment in your life.